So, I would like to begin this video with a moment of si silence for our late Queen. Okay, now let's get into the video. Um, so, basically... Most people know this, but uh, the, our Queen uh, Elizabeth II has died. And yeah, I'm not the biggest, you know, like royalist. I mean, my nose is a bit bunged up, so I'm sorry if I'm like snuffling, you know, a bit during this. Um, but um, I. What I do love is like England, my country, and oh, the UK. I love the UK, and maybe not all parts of the UK equally. I obviously prefer England over uh, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland, but I think all three of the four of us are very, you know, ha have very rich cultures, and you know, I love the culture and history of the United Kingdom, and the royal family is one of, if not the biggest part of UK history and culture for the longest time. So I love, I kind of love the royal family and there's like the monarchy uh, because they're just such a big part of the, you know, our culture and history. What I do not love is when my nose gets bunged up when I want to say something important. Um, and I am upset at the passing of our queen. Um, oh, you're gonna come here, Lily. She's like, yeah, there. Um, so, I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to know more about what's going to happen in the UK now that the Queen has passed. But, uh, the part that I want to talk about is the 12... Well, the government is going to announce that the country is going to go into mourning. And it, uh, uh, this is expected to last 12 days. For those 12 days, or however long it is, that... We are uh, now the country's gonna go into mourning. I will not be making any videos or live streams or anything uh, out of respect for our late queen. Um, and yeah, um, so yeah, this is a bit um, surreal because the queen has always been just. They like, um, like her or not, she has been the most important diplomatic um, person for the UK. Because while most people may look at the monarchy and be like, "Oh, they're just like punch fancy people that don't do anything, just like throw fancy parties all day and." and drink wine and it's like well that's not entirely false those fancy parties are some of the most valuable diplomatic you know uh, relations that England has had throughout the years because they the royals wouldn't just invite their you know other Brits to them they'd invite world leaders um, and it would be a very important, uh, to, you know, diplomatic uh, meeting uh, with like, so you had like leaders of other countries, most notably probably the United States and it probably helped to uh, foster a, a relationship, the relationship that we now have with the United States. I dare say, dare say that if the monarchy was not around for the past few years, like, it, say, 
since the, since the start of World War Two, we just got rid of the monarchy because, uh, or like, just, you know, like say we got rid of the monarchy because the uh, Queen's uh, uncle abdicated and was like, and like we were so outraged that we just got rid of the monarchy at that point for whatever reason. Um, I dare say we probably wouldn't have nearly as strong as a relationship with America and and a lot of like former colonies because the Queen was it was extremely popular with the um, former colonies of the Empire. Um, so yeah. She was definitely a very important diplomatic... Uh, well, she was basically the centerpiece of British dim diplomacy for her li entire life. Because, you know, her entire life was just going to, um, you know, the colonies and uh, uh, America and meeting presidents, world leaders and... Uh, Everything the royal family did reflected upon the UK, for better and for worse. Um, and, yeah, you know, the world leaders met the Queen and then, you know, they, they you know, liked the Queen and then they had better opinions of not only the Queen, but England and its people as well. And the... the um, then they'd go tell their friends, oh, I met the Queen, she was a lovely woman, she was kind, she was uh, courteous, she was this and that, and, you know, then they they tell their friends, and it was just like, and that, and then, you know, that would reflect, again, that would reflect upon England. So, yeah, I definitely say that um, she has been the most important diplomatic person for the UK in years. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and there are people who don't particularly like the monarchy and, I just, in my opinion, it's just like... I get, I get where they're coming from because... You know, they don't really see the values, like, we pay, we give them a lot of money and they don't really see what they do, but if you, I don't, I think it, that comes more of a lack of just, like, knowing what they actually do, because, like I said, the Queen was the most important diplomatic figure for England, like, you know, if we didn't have her, we wouldn't have a, a good relationship with America, well, as good as a relationship with America, with the former colonies, and so on and so forth, and... Not only that, but she has also been, like, kind of the one, like, pre the, the presence that, you know, was always there, you, you know, like, no matter what, the, the Queen was always there for her people, for her country, and, uh, you know, she uh, would, uh, like, get, you know, address the... UK, like when Corona started, she reassured everybody that uh, um, it was gonna be okay. It's, we're gonna go through some hard times, but eventually we'll everything will go back to normal. We'll be able to see our friends and family again. And I think, well, it certainly helped me, but I think that helped a lot of people. Um, you know, with getting through Corona, like. While it had had been turbulent with in the UK, it was definitely more turbulent for places like America, who didn't have someone like the Queen to reassure them that everything was going to be okay. Instead, they had Donald Trump, who downplayed it and uh, just caused a whole load of havoc. And I really think that was. It, the most important thing with the Queen and the monarchy is for them to not be political because, uh, you know, because then they can just speak from neutral ground, just like, hey, I'm not on the left, I'm not talking from the right, I'm just here to tell you that everything's going to be okay and that, uh, you know, and that uh, you know, everything's going to be going back to normal 
eventually don't worry and you could also say that um they were saying that from a bit of a pri- from a privileged privileged standpoint but it was clear that the queen was affected by lockdowns and all that it, no more apparent to than when her husband died and she attended his funeral and she was completely alone like that just when I, when I saw that I just had just so much sadness it just made me so sad it was like imagine them being a, not only your husband dying but then having no one there to comfort you and it is sometimes hard to, to um think that you know the queen you know was a person but she you know she was a person she had her own thoughts opinions and feelings and all that and while the royal family was very secretive about that you know how her, about her like true feelings and everything you can sometimes like you saw there were like cracks and like little windows where you saw that they weren't you know perfect so they were more they had their own problems and you saw of em- and you saw that like again also and there was also um when we're back, I can't remember when this was, but there was a, um, the royal family was going through a turbulent time, and there was, like, um, the queen and her husband had, uh, some relationship issues, and, uh, um, during that time, um, the queen's husband, uh, gave a speech talking about, um, marriage and all that, and, it, uh, saying how the queen, um, has uh, that saying how like um tolerance is like the vital ingredient to having a long um relationship and uh, saying how the queen has that in abundance and you really in that speech i really felt i you know you could really feel how much you know he did like love and admire his wife um but yeah, um, yeah, that's just my experience uh, with the royal family. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna end this video here, and I just want to say uh, it's okay to, you know, like the queen and be really sad that she's gone, or dislike the queen and not be upset that she's gone. The important thing to remember is to just be respectful. Don't don't be an asshole. Basically, just if you don't, if you're not, you know, upset that the queen is dead, then just keep that to yourself. Just you don't have to like go around to people who are upset to, to the queen that's passing and stuff. So, oh, you're one that for be for being sad that the queen's dead because I don't like the queen. Therefore, you're Emotions and opinions are invalid. Just no. You 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 are you are valid to dislike the queen. You're you're valid to like the queen. You're valid to not be sad that she's dead. You're valid to be sad that she's dead. And just don't go to people. Just don't go to the other side and bother them. Just be respectful and yeah. Anyway, um, oh, one more thing. I think the saddest thing about the Queen passing is that sh- the timing, really, because, uh, you know, with the state of the world and all that, like, and the country, like, the country's in, going through hard times. There's a war in Europe, and it, uh, um, everything's going crazy. Um... I really would have liked it if she could have passed away when everything wasn't as turbulent, when there wasn't, when Ukraine wasn't being invaded, 
when the UK was in a more stable position and the US wasn't in the state that the US is in right now. But hey, we can't choose when we pass away. Well, unless you take the obvious means. But anyway, I'll see you guys in what I do next. And yeah, God save the king. <laughs>